I'm making this two foot by eight foot solar thermal heater so that I can put it on the south side of my house and heat my basement, which in turn would heat the rest of the house. This month my propane bill was about a hundred dollars and that's normal for uh, the winter. Two months ago it was $160. And I have a very efficient water heater and a very efficient uh, furnace, but it's, you know, L uh, LP gas or propane jumped up from $1.20 a gallon to this month it was $1.70 a gallon. So for about $200, $220 to $250 in materials, I'm building this, which will heat my basement passively and hopefully uh, reduce my heating bills because my basement normally stays around 60 degrees even without the furnace turned on. I used my table saw and ripped a one inch thick piece of wood off of the one inch by six inch by eight foot boards and used that one inch piece of wood for the frame. I was able to cut the aluminum screen quite easily using shears from Harbor Freight and dragging one blade of the shears across the screen up against a straight edge. I then stapled the screen to the frame using a staple gun and putting staples about every six inches. And here I have it, the box portion of it made up. I used my roto zip to cut a about a six and a quarter inch diameter hole in the back of the plywood at the top and bottom of the uh, solar heater. Then I use just regular 100% silicone caulking for the ceiling of the, uh, the ducting and the ceiling of the wood. On some of these builds, people say you have to use high temperature uh, fire stop caulking and the fire stop caulking is not waterproof so it will not hold up to the weather. This 100% silicone the service temperature is negative 60 degrees Fahrenheit to 400 degrees Fahrenheit and this solar heater will never get to 400 degrees so this silicone caulking just regular white silicone caulking will work perfectly for this application. It then I put a 15 pound weight on the flange of the six inch ducting and let the uh, silicone cure. And there's a six inch ducting that protrudes through the back of the solar heater on the top and the bottom, which will provide an inlet and an outlet for the air. I then cut the poly iso cyanurate insulation foam, which is used in high temperature applications. And this foam doesn't melt. And I cut that to the required dimensions and then spread uh, silicone sealant on the back of here and push the insulation into place. To cut the polyiso cyanurate insulation, I used a snap-off blade uh, knife extended all the way. This is a knife you can buy just about anywhere, the kind that you can break the blade off or snap the blade off when it gets dull. I then cut the polyiso insulation for the tops and the sides and use silicone sealant to secure that foam to the wood box. Here's the poly iso insulation secured in place with the silicone sealant on the back and the sides. I then went around the perimeter of the solar heater and sealed up any joints with the HVAC foil tape. I just spray painted this with a high heat flat black rust-oleum spray paint. Here's a uh, thermal scanner. We'll see. It's about 50 degrees out, 51, 52 degrees out. Um, the cement is 41. So the test out here where it's sunny. So in the sun, where the cement has been sitting in the sun, it's about 47 degrees. So I moved this outside, and within 30 seconds of me moving it outside, the surface is already in the 90s, 97. 101. 
and it is three o'clock in the afternoon and this thing without any window over it or shielding over it is already 114 degrees this is uh, two coats of that high heat flat black so I can imagine how hot this thing would get if I put the uh, clear polycarbonate roofing on this 118 degrees 119 then siliconed in place these tough decks square closures for the ends of the solar heater to seal up the gaps that are in the uh, polycarbonate roofing material because it's corrugated. I mixed up a mixture of 50% water and 50% isopropyl alcohol and sprayed it on the clear uh, polycarbonate roofing material and used a paper towel to get any dust and uh, debris. I then installed the screen at an angle so that the inlet side is closer to the screen and the air will come through the screen and get heated as it travels up towards the exit. I cut a piece of wood and siliconed it to the foam about in the middle of the solar heater which this acts as a baffle to keep the air from going just straight up underneath the screen and never getting heated. If the air goes underneath the screen, it'll at least hit this baffle and be forced upwards. On the inlet side, I have this piece of wood siliconed in place sitting on top of the screen so that the air that is coming into the solar heater doesn't blow in and hit the corrugated uh, roofing material and just that decreases the efficiency of the solar heater so the air will hit this and be deflected up. I put two coats of Valspar exterior paint on the wood on the outside of this solar heater just so it is weatherproofed and it doesn't stick out like a sore thumb and it matches the color of my house. I took some plywood that I had and cut six inch holes in it for the vent ductings I then silicone some poly iso foam to the back of that and put weights and a can of paint on it until it's cured. I then bought two of these rolls of the foam window seal which is made for extra large gaps. This is a half inch thick by three quarters of an inch wide. I then put that on the sides and the top and bottom of the little fitting that will go into the window sill. So I have this mounted on the south side of my house. I have two fence posts that I drove into the ground with a post driver. And I plan to secure this on the sides using two conduit straps right here. So the air coming out of this thing is around 180 degrees. It's about 1.30 in the afternoon. And about the high 40s right now. but uh, almost 190. So when I add a fan in here, it'll uh, decrease the internal temperatures. I attached the six inch diameter flexible ducting, which is insulated. I believe this is an R8 insulation. One goes from the inlet, goes up, and then there's another one that comes down to the outlet. So I have a computer fan hooked up. This pushes about 53 cubic foot per minute, hooked up to a 12 volt battery. This fan will run off of 0.96 watts. I plan to get a 5 watt solar panel and run it off of that. So now it's in the 120s. Now it's at 307 on December 28th. So the sun is already starting to go down. So you can see the airflow. I can imagine how hot this thing will get in the late morning or the uh, mid-afternoon. Because it's in the late afternoon, it's still 120 some degrees.